One of the earliest TV commercials to have aired in India, way back in 1983, had Kapil Dev holding a tube of shaving cream and saying, Palmolive da jawab nahi. Joining me today is a gentleman who perhaps wasn't born back then, but is intently taking the legacy of brand Palmolive forward. He is Gunjit Jain, Executive Vice President Marketing at Colgate Palmolive India. Thank you for joining us, Gunjit. Thanks, Nita. Lovely to be here. Super excited. So, so tell me, uh, Palmolive then and Palmolive now, uh, what are the qualities that you managed to retain and what are the attributes that had to go, keeping in mind the changing era? Great question to start off with. So let me start with the legacy of Palmolive. And before that, I'll take a step back. What I'll talk about is that, hey, in India, Colgate Palmolive is currently is, is in oral care behemoth. But globally, less than 50% of our business comes from oral care. Okay. More than 50% of our business comes from categories like home care, personal care, skin health, pet nutrition. And within personal care, Palmolive is a leading brand in many geographies in the world. And even in India, like you mentioned, actually I'll also go you know, beyond 1983, Palmolive has a heritage of 50 years mm -hmm. in this country. It was always at the forefront of personal care, uh, including uh, shaving cream, including bar soaps mm -hmm. and today body wash. In fact, you know, Palmolive was the one that pioneered body wash as a category into this country about 20 years ago. And over a period of time, it has evolved. And even though, you know, there was a rich heritage for so many years and it was at the forefront of personal care, for the last few years, I have to admit, it was a bit underserved by us. And that is why strategically, now we've made it a top priority mm -hmm. and reprioritizing Palmolive is a key part of our growth plan. Uh, so Palmolive today, what it stands for is rich, natural, sensorial experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a fantastic range of body washes and hand soaps. You should try it too. I, I remember in 2022, you revamped the shower range, Palmolive shower range. But also, uh, we know we all also often hear that uh, youngsters, youngsters today are not very comfortable using brands that their fathers or grandfathers are very, uh, you know, thickly associated with. Uh, do you face that uh, problem just like I think uh, VIP had uh, been struggling to overcome that kind of an image for the longest time. As an FMCG brand, do you face the same struggle where you have to work maybe extra hard to appeal to the Gen Z and the millennial? So on Palmolive, you know, what has happened is that over a period of years, the key category that used to be the lead face for Palmolive has mm -hmm. also changed. Mm -hmm. Now, at that point in time, like you said, yes, it was the shaving cream and Kapil Dev used to be you know, the, the key protagonist. Now that we are much more in the rich natural beauty and sensorial play, mm -hmm. the current generation associates Palmolive with body washes and hand soaps. Mm -hmm. The current generation does not associate it with the shaving cream that used to be there many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. Because the communication was also not there for so many years, right? right. So what they've seen today is what this is. Mm -hmm. In fact, a couple of strengths that come up when we talk to our consumers, and this is, you know, quantitatively validated everything. The two strengths, competitive strengths for Palmolive that come across today are the packaging appeal mm -hmm. and the fragrance experience. Okay. And that is among, you know, the young women of this country, which is our core target audience. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And did you also have a checklist while advertising this, you know, also while putting in ingredients in the product because a lot of youngsters don't like the parabens and the sulfates in, in uh, hand washes or body washes or even shampoos for that matter. So what, was there a big checklist to appeal to these So youngsters? see, what we, what we do is that, you know, we define our target audience. Then we try to figure out that what matters to them more, what mm -hmm. matters to them less. Also then bring in the lens of what is the strategic fit that the brand has mm -hmm. along with, you know, what the consumer wants mm -hmm. and then offer superior product experiences, superior communication, which comes out of clarity of your positioning. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you reach consumers in a way that also works for them. So when we do that, that as a mix is what we try to maximize. Uh, there, the right sweet spot for the brand is mm -hmm rich natural fragrance experiences that our showers offer mm -hmm. and that's what we stand for and that's what we try to do better than anybody else. A big chunk of the country uh, uses soaps and uh, body washes is considered a premium offering um, and yet I know I see the price point uh, it's it's not very highly priced Correct. Uh, the Palmolive range so what really is the target audience here? So very good question 
like you said, majority of the consumers in this country still use a bar soap. The penetration of body washes in the country is only about 2 to 3 percent. Even in urban India, it's not more than, you know, low single digit percentages. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge headroom, headroom for growth. And why I say that there's a huge headroom for growth? Because the movement's already started. Okay. The category is growing at a very, very fast pace. Even though some of these consumers may not have purchased a body wash yet, mm -hmm. a lot of them travel all across the country, stay in hotels and what you get in a hotel is it? is a body wash. Yeah. So trial is getting generated for the category. There is interest which is getting generated. Mm -hmm. Once people use it, they realize a few things about the category as well. Number one, it's softer, gentler on your skin. Number two, it's obviously much more hygienic because it is not being shared by a lot of people. Yeah. You yeah. pour the drop onto your hands. And number three, that the fragrance experience can be significantly superior as well. So there's a lot that's going to be working for the category. Mm -hmm. It's early days, headroom for growth. You, you recently came up with a campaign uh, for Pamela, very interesting one where the bathtub is flying. Uh, in the past, we discussed that uh, you had Sunil Gavaskar, you had Kapil Dev, and I think I remember even an ad by Dia Mirza. Uh, you had all these celebrities in the ads. Why, when you decided to come back with a big campaign for Palmolive, uh, why did you not pick a celebrity to do it? So interesting question, and this comes our way quite often actually. So see, the strategy is not to use or not use celebrities. Mm -hmm. The strategy is to express what your brand stands for and what the communication objective is in the best possible way. Mm -hmm. Now, a celebrity may fit that brief. It may not fit that brief. In this case, we felt that it didn't necessarily have to fit the brief. Okay. So we didn't use a celebrity. Okay. If, if I were to ask you, what is your earliest memory of Palmolive? My earliest memory of Palmolive is the Palmolive bar soaps mm -hmm. that used to be there. Okay. Uh, followed by the body wash uh, mm -hmm. because I've been using the body washes for the past 15 years. Okay. Uh, and like you said, 1983, I wasn't born. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Gunja, tell us about Slow Down and Savor the Feeling, the new campaign that you've launched for Palmolive and how are you creating uh, the buzz around the big brand now? Oh, that's something that I'm truly excited about. I'm truly excited about it simply because it's the first time we've got a national campaign on Palmolive body wash uh, out there. So let me first talk about, you know, the consumer that we are talking to. The core prime prospect consumer for Palmolive body washes are the young aspiring women in urban India. Many of them are working. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, and they are ones who are, who are ambitious, who want to accomplish a lot. They are doing a lot of things. They are rushing through stuff. And it's a choice. It's not out of compulsion. They are rushing through stuff. Mm -hmm. But then the insight is, when I'm rushing through life, I'm not truly experiencing it. And that's where Palmolive as a brand comes in because Palmolive as a brand gives them the moment to slow down mm -hmm. and savor it, which happens with the Palmolive body wash, shower gel experiences. So that's the role that the brand plays and that's where the campaign of, you know, savor the feeling comes from. Mm -hmm. uh, the the in, exciting part about the campaign is that we are trying to get consumers to savor that feeling and have that experience themselves, mm -hmm. which is... When you see digital content, you see your favorite influencers also experiencing it. Then in the morning, when you are hitting the gym and you get to the shower cubicle, mm -hmm. there you realize that the shower cubicle has been transformed into a Palmolive experience zone mm -hmm. where you can experience the product. It's been decked up like that. Mm -hmm. Then when you are on your way to work, whether it's a bus shelter or whether it's the Mumbai Metro, mm -hmm. some compartments there or some of the shelters there have also been transformed into experience zones. Mm -hmm. So they've got fragrance, they are decked up the, the right rich natural palm olive way. When you enter the office building, the frisking booths may have been converted into palm olive uh, experience zones. So you can truly experience all of that. And once you are convinced, if you are in a supermarket, you will experience the palm olive zones there as well because they'll be decked up there as well in over about 100 stores all across the country, uh, mounted outlets. So mm -hmm. bringing that experience and the idea to the real world is what we are trying to do mm -hmm. uh, with the target audience that we have. And also, if you were to talk about your marketing uh, mix, uh, which medium would get the bulk of your spends in this case? So it's across touch points. But our, our strategy on this one is to be tighter, harder and personalized. Mm -hmm. What that means is, that we can go sharp to our target audience, go with the frequency which is relatively higher, mm -hmm. 
and then be as personalized as we can be. This, of course, is much, much easier to do on digital. Mm -hmm. So we've got a bulk of our communication happening on digital uh, media. But at the same time, the other touch points that I mentioned, uh, we can do that as well. Uh, and, and it's a mix of all. But yeah, digital media gets a lot of attention. And in Colgate, Palmolive has clocked close to nine decades in the country. And in this process, of course, Colgate has managed to become uh, the almost synonymous to oral care uh, in the country. But Palmolive is still taking steady strides to establish itself. And right now you're facing humongous competition uh, established players like HUL, ITC, Fiamma, Nivea and even homegrown brands for some, to some extent like Plum. How difficult is it going to be for you to get that market authority there? So see, one can often get obsessed with competition. Mm -hmm. But I've always believed and everybody I respect in the marketing world also believes that, you know, one has to be obsessed with the consumer. Mm -hmm. So that is going to be our approach. We have to be obsessed about what the consumer needs and what the brand strategy is. Palmolive has three solid advantages. First, because of the heritage of so many years, it's got a lot of residual urban awareness. Second, like I said, our shower gels and our hand soaps have competitive superiority on packaging appeal and fragrance experience. Mm -hmm. Third, since it's such a huge business for us globally, we've got global expertise on the consumer and the category. Mm -hmm. So not only can we continue to provide consumers the superior product experiences that we are providing today, mm -hmm. we can keep upping that game because we've got a lot of knowledge okay. on this one. So we will stay true to what the consumer needs and what we are going to deliver and that is our goalpost not getting distracted by what the others do. Okay. And last year was a great year for Colgate uh, Palmolive, more than 25% profit. Uh, I want to understand how much of uh, advertising has played a role in upping the brand appeal in the country for, for yeah. overall, for Colgate So and see, Palmolive. India is a huge country and businesses tend to, you know, businesses like ours in a category like oral care, which is penetrated almost 100%, right? Every household has a toothpaste at home. There are many levers that will drive the business and advertising or superior communication absolutely has to be one of them, mm -hmm. especially because we've got so many traditional trade stores. It's not a discovery environment. People need to come and ask for mm -hmm. Colgate ka ye wala toothpaste dena, mm -hmm. right? That's what is absolutely critical. So advertising does play a role. How has advertising played a role? Till about a few years ago, you know, not all of our communication was superior communication. Now, 100% of our campaigns that are on air based on consumer tracking are tracking in the top quartile of communication. So, you know, our communication quality has gone up significantly. Mm -hmm. Our media reach has also been widened. And as a result of all of this, we are generating much more demand. So communication has definitely played a role and will continue to play a role, not only for us, but for any any other brands and categories that have the kind of penetration that we do. Can I like to add to that? I think some of your recent campaigns have been fantastic. Thank you. Uh, be that CID collaboration, which was quite a new uh, way of fun. communicating for a toothpaste brand. And uh, even uh, I think my favorite has been the Toothless Granny, which was hilarious to the core. So I think uh, you've done a fantastic job and changed the tonality of communication. I also want to understand, is humor going to be an integral part of overall uh, communication for Colgate? Maybe now Palmolive as well. So see, tonality is going to be different according to the brands mm -hmm. and according to what the task on hand is. So, you know, Colgate Strong Teeth, which is, you know, the toothless granny and the cutting machine that you referred to, the tonality was supposed to be endearing and warm mm -hmm. and entertaining. Right. Because Colgate Strong Teeth has always been a family brand mm -hmm. and it's the family relationships, you know, the endearingness of that and all of that, that plays a big role. On the other hand, you've got a Colgate Max Fresh, which is fun. Mm -hmm. So the tonality there is fun. We've recently come up with a campaign on Colgate Total there the tonality is that of expertise in science. Okay. And Palmolive is sensorial, right? So it will depend upon what the brand and the task on hand is, and it will differ. But what is not going to change is a couple of things. Each and every piece of communication that we come up with needs to be engaging because if people don't take notice, nothing else matters. Second, it needs to be persuasive enough mm -hmm. for people to take some action based on that. 
And you know, since the revamp of the products, uh, what kind of growth have you seen uh, for brand Palmolive in the last year? So brand Palmolive as of now is, uh, is that, you know, the shower gel business is at double digit growth. Uh, the good news also is that, you know, it is competitive uh, uh, growth, which means that, you know, we've been growing share over the last few quarters as well. Mm -hmm. So we are on the right track. Mm -hmm. But like I said, the category penetration still has a lot of headroom for growth. So we have to continue to outpace that category growth uh, and keep winning. Yeah. And, and what is the market share right now that it enjoys? So something that we don't share um, generally, but you know, uh, there are five big players uh, currently. It's a relatively much more fragmented market as compared to toothpaste. For example, we are in the top five uh, and our goal would be to continue to climb and outpace the category. And most importantly, you know, give consumers what they need. Uh, that's the goalpost. Do, do you have a, you know, an agenda or date when you will be in the top three or maybe the top one? Yeah, so see, every brand is going to have that. You know, there's always a five-year start plan, there's a three-year start plan, there's a budget planning that we do every year. So, you know, all of those are always there. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I also, you know, like to tell my team all the time is that there are milestones, but to get to milestones, you need to accomplish the in-stones, mm -hmm. right? Every small step done well matters. Uh, so we focus on all of those. If you know you are moving every inch in the right direction, the miles will happen. Uh, so yeah. I remember Prabha Narasimhan so speaking about how uh, Colgate Palmolive is going to be diversifying in a big way, and like you mentioned, uh, you have more than uh, oral care. You are into pet care. You have uh, dishwashing liquids, and I mean a full range out there available globally. So under Palmolive, what is the next big category that is going to be introduced? Yeah, so again, I'll take a step back, you know, not just Palmolive, but overall, uh, you know, like you mentioned, diversification beyond oral care is a stated strategy. Mm -hmm. So it's out there in the public and we've gone out there and said it. And we've got expertise on multiple categories all across the globe as well. India at the same time is also doing very, very well as a country. Mm -hmm. We are progressing on multiple fronts and this will continue for, for many, many years. So it's the right time to diversify for us. As we diversify, there are loads of opportunities, Palmolive, non-Palmolive, other categories, all of those that we keep looking at. And everything is going to be assessed on three measures. Mm -hmm. First, what's the readiness of the market in India today? Mm -hmm. Second, what's our global expertise, understanding of the consumer, of the technology, of the category, so on and so forth. And finally, as a combination of all of this, when we put it all together, will we have the ability to win? So that's basically the assessment metrics. We are looking at a lot of things uh, and we'll, I'm sure, chat soon when we have something. Superb. I guess uh, may you continue to diversify, may you bring in a lot more products which continue to touch the consumers and may we all soon chime in with Kapil Dev saying, Pamo live that jawab nahi. Thank you so much for joining us, Gunjit. Thank Pleasure you, Nitha. Thank you so much.